So lately, I've been doing quite a lot of speedrunning, but I'm still really bad at it. It's not easy, man. I gotta get like a 1 in 7.5 trillion odds to get even a decent run. However, during my hundreds of attempts, I've found some strats that are satisfyingly broken. And I have 8 that I want to share with you guys. Number 1. Boats. Boats are probably one of the most broken items in Minecraft, even outside of speedrunning. Not only can it bring you across large bodies of water very quickly, but it can also bring you across many other gaps with ease. Massive falls can be easily crossed by hopping in a boat and riding down. You can also cross more horizontal gaps by hopping in and out of the boat, which for some reason slows its vertical speed, but at the same time allows you to move horizontally. You can make many impossible jumps with just a boat by placing it and hopping in it. Six block jumps, two block high jumps, crossing one block high holes, and many others. If you're about to fall to your death, with good practice you can MLG boat to save yourself. If you're about to die to monsters, you can place a boat to save yourself. It is just a really useful item, especially in the nether, and it comes at a price of only 5 extra planks in the overworld, so definitely consider grabbing a boat in your run. Number 2. Blind Travel this is a technique that I've learned a lot more recently, but it vastly improves chances of finding the stronghold. Basically, once you exit the nether, you throw an eye of ender and see which direction it goes. Then, you will go back into the nether, travel to one of these coordinates, and build another portal, which will place you fairly close to the stronghold. Keep in mind, you need that 10 extra obsidian to build the second portal, so this is usually done after raiding a bastion. Number 3. The COD strat. This is another strategy that I've learned recently, and it gives me more hope from villages because it's kinda OP. Basically, you hire a fisherman villager by placing down a barrel, which is crafted with 6 wooden planks and 2 wooden slabs. Then, you would collect slightly more wheat than you would need to trade with the farmer villager for 3 emeralds. You can also find these 3 emeralds in a village house, but regardless, you can trade for a bucket of COD with the fisherman. This trade isn't 100% guaranteed, so you may have to break and replace the barrel several times in order to get that bucket of COD trade. Since you can get this bucket using no iron, the iron from the gold will always guarantee a flint and steel and will almost always guarantee an iron pickaxe. This is huge because sometimes you get unlucky and the golem only drops 3 iron, and if you have enough for the iron pickaxe, it makes it much easier to raid bastions. Number 4. Bastion Routes Speaking of bastions, it is really useful to know how to raid each type of bastion. There are four different types of bastions, bridge, stables, housing, and treasure. They all have different gold locations, so you will need to practice memorizing where they are. But once you have practiced enough, it is an extremely fast way to get all your pearls, obsidian, and some fire reds to help fight in the fortress. If I had a choice between a bastion and a fortress, I would pretty much always raid the bastion first since it gives such a big advantage for the rest of the game. Number 5 mapless treasure. This strategy turns a hopeless ocean spawn into possibly one of the best spawns you can ever get. I won't go into how this works, so you can check out the link in the description if you want to learn more about it. But basically you can use the pie dart in the F3 menu to determine which chunk has a buried treasure. Once you find the chunk, you dig down in the 9-9 spot in the chunk, which the buried treasure will always be in. The chest has everything, food, a good amount of iron, and even TNT, diamonds, and gold. The resources you can find in there are usually enough to make a bucket, flint and steel, and an iron or diamond pick, but it is possible for there to not be enough, although that is pretty rare. If you get lucky, you can spawn next to a lava pool or magma ravine, and you will have an insanely quick nether entry. Number 6. F3 Pydar In Mapless Treasure, the Pydar in the F3 menu was used. This tool can tell you so much other than buried treasures. Access it by pressing Shift and F3. From there, most of the information you'll be using in the Pydar is under the following. Tick, level, entities, the block entities. In the overworld, it can tell you if there's a village nearby, what type it is, and whether it has a blacksmith or not. If you see a bell, there's a village nearby. If you see a campfire, you know it's probably an Otega biome. If a village is in a plains or a desert biome, seeing a furnace means that there is a blacksmith. In the nether, you can locate fortresses by looking for mob spawners and reloading chunks. However, this sometimes leads to finding treasure bastions since they have mob spawners. Overall, it makes it a lot easier to locate structures and figure out whether you should quit a seed or not. Number 7. Bastion X-Ray This is another useful feature in the F3 menu, where you look at the entity count. It tells you how many entities there are on the screen, and how many there are in total. When entering the nether, you can lower your FOV and look around to determine if there are a bunch of entities concentrated together. Bastions spawn a bunch of piglins that leave a notable increase on the entity count. If you ever find such a signal in your run, Head in the direction you are looking at, and you'll almost always run into a bastion. And finally, number 8, the lava underwater trick. I have no idea how this works, but I'm pretty sure it is related to how the diamond and clay trick works, if you know what that is. Anyways, if you find a pool of water, there is a good chance a lava pool will spawn under it. 
So when you're out in the open and you can't find a lava pool or an ocean, then find the nearest pond and dig down. Then you look for lava pops and subtitles, which you should definitely have turned on. You can locate the lava pool using these audio cues. There will be times where lava won't spawn, but it's more likely to spawn than it isn't. Like I said, I don't know how this works, and I'm pretty sure some smart developers can figure out the exact probability for this, but for now, just expect to find lava most of the time. Anyways, those are some broken strats that I've learned throughout speedrunning. There are obviously strats out there that are just as or even more broken as these, but these are just the ones that I see myself using a lot. If you enjoyed, make sure to like, subscribe, and watch my other videos because this took a lot of effort to make since I don't really do these informative talking type videos. And I'm currently fighting COVID at the time of recording this video, so yeah, I got that going for me. Anyways, I should probably stop rambling, so thank you for watching and have a nice day.